You may have heard or read something about a star that is predicted to go nova and suddenly become visible in our skies. T. Corona Borealis, also known as the Blaze Star, is a recurring variable star that has outbursts every 80 or so years, and we're due any day now. So sit back and enjoy and learn about the Blaze Star and what you can expect to see. Welcome to the Astro Guy Podcast. I'm not an expert, I'm an amateur like you. I'm here to learn and here to teach. So let's enjoy the ride together. Carpe Noctum, seize the night. Welcome to the Astro Guy Podcast. I'm your host, Wayne Zool. There's been a bit of chatter about a star that should be going nova soon and could become a naked eye object any day now. But what is a nova? How can astronomers predict this? We're going to answer these and other questions in this episode. So what is a nova? A nova is a sudden temporary brightening of a star that appears in the sky and then gradually fades over days, weeks, or months. This happens in binary star systems where a white dwarf star pulls in material from its companion star. The brightening is caused by different processes depending on the relationship between the two stars. There are three main types of novae, classical novae, recurrent novae, and dwarf novae. Classical novae occur in a binary star system where a white dwarf and a companion star are close together. The white dwarf draws in hydrogen from the companion, which builds up on its surface. When the accumulated hydrogen reaches a critical pressure and temperature, it triggers a thermonuclear explosion, causing the star to suddenly brighten and then fade over a period of weeks or months. Classical novae are usually one-time events as far as human timescales go. Recurrent novae are similar to classical novae, but occur more frequently, with outbursts happening every few decades to every century. In these systems, the white dwarf also pulls in material from its companion star and periodically undergoes explosions. The white dwarf in recurrent novae often has a higher mass or accretes material more efficiently. We know of only 10 recurring novae in the Milky Way galaxy. T. Corona Borealis is the brightest one of the ones that we know of. Another recurrent nova is the star R.S. Ophiuchi, which has outbursts about every 22 years. When the star goes from 13th to 5th magnitude and then back down. Dwarf novae are a type of variable star found in binary systems with a white dwarf and a companion star. In these systems, material from the companion forms an accretion disk around the white dwarf. Periodically, the disk becomes unstable, leading to dramatic increases in brightness. This increase is due to changes in the accretion disk rather than a thermonuclear explosion. Dwarf novae have more frequent and less intense outbursts compared to classical and recurrent novae. A couple examples of dwarf novae are the stars SS Cygni and U Geminorum. Okay, now we know about the different types of novae. Let's learn about T Corona Borealis. This star is often referred to as T CRB or the Blaze Star. It is an intriguing and unique binary system located in the constellation Corona Borealis. The Blaze Star is classified as a recurrent nova, meaning that it periodically undergoes dramatic outbursts in brightness. It is part of a binary system that consists of two stars in close orbit around each other. The primary star is a red giant and the secondary star is a white dwarf. TCRB is famous for its recurrent nova eruptions. The earliest recorded event occurred in 1217 and was recorded by a monk in Germany. The star has been observed several times erupting since then. The most recent observations were in 1866 and then again in 1946. During these outbursts, the star's brightness increased dramatically, reaching up to a visual magnitude of about 2.0, making it easily visible to the naked eye. The outbursts are caused by the transfer of material from the red giant to the white dwarf. When enough material accumulates on the white dwarf surface, 
it triggers a thermonuclear explosion, causing the star to brighten significantly. In its normal state, TCRB remains much dimmer, usually around magnitude 10 making it only visible through a telescope or in long exposure images. Even in its quiescent state, the system exhibits variability. The red giant component pulsates, causing regular changes in brightness over a period of about 100 days. Although those fluctuations are relatively small, most being less than a change of magnitude of less than one. On April 20, 2016, skytelescope.com reported that T. Corona Borealis had been getting brighter since February of 2015, going from magnitude 10.5 to about 9.2. A similar brightening happened in 1938, which was followed by an outburst in 1946. By June of 2018, the star had dimmed slightly, but was still unusually active. Then, in the spring of 2023, it suddenly dimmed to magnitude 12.3. This dimming pattern also occurred before the 1946 outburst, suggesting that T. Corona Borealis might erupt again between May and September of 2024. While there is a high likelihood of this occurring, there is no guarantee. Professional astronomers study T. Corona Borealis as it is a valuable object for helping us to understand stellar phenomena and the mechanics of binary star systems. So how do we study it? First, by making optical observations through telescopes equipped with photometers, which are devices used to measure a star's magnitude. Some astronomers will use a spectrograph to monitor the spectra of the system. By making these types of observations, astronomers can track the star's variability and identify the onset of an outburst. Detailed spectral analysis reveals the chemical composition, temperature, and velocity of the ejected material during the outbursts. This information is crucial for understanding the processes that are occurring in the system. Using space-based telescopes, such as the Chandra X-ray Observatory, the Hubble Space Telescope, or the JWST, allows astronomers to observe TCRB in the X-ray, ultraviolet, and infrared wavelengths. These observations provide insights into the high-energy processes and interactions between the white dwarf and its companion star. Radio telescopes are used to detect emissions from the expanding shells of gas ejected during nova outbursts. This helps in studying the structure and the dynamics of the ejected material. Continuous monitoring over decades allows astronomers to study the long-term behavior of TCRB, including its periodic outbursts and quiescent phases. But why study it? Studying a star like the Blaze star helps astronomers understand the mechanisms that trigger nova outbursts in binary stars. This includes the accumulation of material on the white dwarf from its companion star and the subsequent thermonuclear runaway. Additionally, TCRB is a binary system, making it an excellent case study for understanding the interactions between two closely orbiting stars. This includes mass transfer processes and the impact of these interactions on stellar evolution. Observations of TCRB contribute to broader knowledge about the life cycles of stars, particularly white dwarfs and their eventual fate. Understanding novae provides insights into the end stages of stellar evolution. Recurring novae, like TCRB, serve as natural laboratories for stuttering high-energy astrophysical phenomena. The extreme conditions present during outbursts allow scientists to test theories and models of stellar physics. By studying the nova outbursts of TCRB, astronomers gain a better understanding of the thermonuclear processes that occur on the surfaces of white dwarfs. This helps refine models of stellar explosions. Long-term monitoring of TCRB aids in developing predictive models for nova outbursts. This can improve our ability to predict similar events in other star systems. Novae contribute to the chemical enrichment of the galaxy by dispersing elements into the interstellar medium. Studying TCRB helps us understand this process and its implications for galactic evolution. Being that the Blaze star is within easy reach of many amateur telescopes and its position in the sky for northern hemisphere observers, it is a popular target for amateurs 
who perform research on variable stars and novae. The American Association of Variable Star Observers, AAVSO, has some information and resources on their website about how amateurs can help study this interesting star system. I'll leave links to an episode where I interviewed a board member of the AAVSO, as well as a link to their site in the show notes. There are several ways that you can contribute to the study of TCRB. You can make your own observations and compare its brightness to other field stars, record your magnitude estimate, and track it in the spreadsheet to make a magnitude plot. If you're already doing astrophotography, take some images of the field centered on TCRB. Stack them and do some minor stretching on the stack, and then compare the magnitude with the known magnitude of other field stars. Even better would be to take a series of short exposures. The length will depend on your telescope and camera settings, but anywhere from 10 seconds to a minute should be more than enough. You'll just need to make sure that no stars in the image are overexposed. Once you have your images, you can import them into software such as Astrophotometry Tool or Astro Image J. These are two different freeware packages that can analyze FITS files, plate solve, and plot your magnitude estimates. There are tutorials on how to use them on YouTube. I'll leave links in the show notes to the download sites for both packages. T Corona Borealis is located in the constellation Corona Borealis, the northern crown, and it is about 2,000 light years away from us. To star hop to it, start at magnitude 2.2 Alpheca the brightest star in Corona Borealis. You'll notice a fourth magnitude star about one and a half degrees east of Alpheca and another 4.5 magnitude star one and a half degrees east of that. Follow that line east for another two degrees and you should have TCRB in your field of view. It'll help to use an app like Stellarium to print a finder chart of what other stars are in the field of view. This will help you to pinpoint the blaze star. Because it's so faint, pinpointing it can be really tricky, even with a smart telescope. For my observing and imaging, I use an ASI Air to go to objects. However, TCRB is not in the Air's database. A faint radio galaxy, IC4587, which is magnitude 15.5, is only five arc minutes away from TCRB. So center IC4587 and the brightest star near it is going to be T. Corona Borealis. While we don't know exactly when the blaze star will blaze, once it does, we'll only have a few days to maybe a week where it will become visible to the naked eye. Being that Corona Borealis is easy to see, especially from a dark location, it will be a treat to experience a new naked eye star that will appear there for days on end. I hope that you'll get to experience the blaze star when it shows up. Well, that's all for this episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I hope that you found our time together to be fun and helpful. If you have questions or episode suggestions, please email us at astroguypodcast at gmail.com or leave us a text or a voicemail at 973-404-0380. If you're not already a member, please join the Astro Guy Podcast group on Facebook. You'll find other members, videos, blogs, and lots of other useful information there for your enjoyment. You can also visit our YouTube channel, the Astro Guy Podcast, for past episodes and other surprises. Please subscribe. Please consider leaving us a review on your podcast platform. It helps us to get new listeners. If you'd like to support the Astro Guy Podcast and YouTube channel, you can simply buy us a cup of coffee. The money is used to maintain and update the equipment that we use to create and publish the show. The link is in the show notes. Thank you again for listening, and may your skies be clear. As always, Carpe Noctum, seize the night. I'm Wayne Zool, and this was the Astro Guy Podcast. Thank you for listening. As always, your questions, comments, and suggestions are welcome. Keep wondering, keep your eyes on the sky, have fun, carpe noctum, seize the night.